Hello, my name is Lola, and I'm going to be reacting to Angry Video Game Nerds Darkman on the NES. I've, I've really never seen Darkman, the movie. Uh, I know that it stars Liam Neeson. I know it's directed by Sam Raimi. I know that um, Liam Neeson becomes a, he's like a superhero or something. And uh, I know that at the end, Bruce Campbell shows up for no reason, because it's like, you know, I mean, it's uh, Sam Raimi. I mean, <laughs> his buddy Bruce Campbell has to show up at some point. Uh, anyway, let's see what uh, Angry Video Game Nerd has to say about the video game adaptation of the movie. And if uh, you want to like, comment, subscribe my channel, you can. Or if you don't want to, that's fine too. Here we go. I'm depressed. Haven't gone anywhere, been stuck in my basement for so long, haven't had any natural light in a long time. But that's going to change. I'm going to have some natural light. Yeah, that's what I need. You didn't think I meant sunlight, did you? No, I don't need yeah. that shit. In fact, let's turn out all the lights in here. Here, okay. let's turn that off and this one right here. Yeah, there we go. That's the way I like it. I like it dark, man. Dark, man. Like the movie and the video game. Yeah, okay. I'm sorry. No more lame jokes. Sorry. Oh. He's gonna take you back to the past to play the shitty games that suck ass. He'd rather have a hey. buffalo. But first, a message from our sponsor. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Angry Video Game Nerd on Dark Man, based on the movie where Qui-Gon Jinn becomes a vigilante after being burned alive by Dr. Giggles. Pretty disturbing. But not as disturbing as having your unencrypted data being harvested by hackers, governments, and corporations. That's why I use ExpressVPN. It creates a protective say, yeah, tunnel between your movie? devices what? and the internet, keeping your private information secure. ExpressVPN takes your connection and reroutes it through another country's server so that you can unblock geo-restricted content. Speaking of Liam Neeson, his Taken trilogy is only available on French Netflix. So just switch your location from the USA to France and they'll show up. Oh. And you can switch between countries all over the world to unlock thousands of other movies and shows previously unavailable. ExpressVPN VPN is fast and easy to use. Plus, at less than $7 a month with a 30-day money-back guarantee, it's no wonder why ExpressVPN is the world's number one rated VPN. So unlock your true video streaming potential and find out how you can get three months of ExpressVPN for free by heading to expressvpn.com slash cinemassacre or clicking the link in the description below. Just go to expressvpn.com slash cinemassacre. By the way, I love that movie Taken. Second and third movie, uh, not so much. There was one movie that came out that was on on the on TV that was playing it's called uh, Afterlife. My mom did not like that movie because other previous Liam Neeson movies that she saw him in, he was always the good guy. Then when she saw this one, uh, she was like, "Wait, he, he, why is he the bad guy in that? What the freak?" Like, he always plays the good guy. Why? What the freak? My mom did not like that movie, Afterlife, where uh, where he's like a, a mortician. Yeah. <laughs> Dark Man's one of those Dark games Man. based on a movie. A movie that tried to be Batman. Came out the year after. You know, you heard of Batman? Well, this is Dark Man. Even had Danny Elfman as the composer. Wow. They just switched out Tim Burton for Sam Raimi yeah. and then switched out Batman for a scientist who creates lifelike masks out of synthetic faces, gets his own face burned by mobsters, and then starts wearing the masks as disguises to impersonate and hunt down the bad guys, meanwhile going mentally unstable. Okay, it's nothing like Batman. 
Darkman is like a combination of all the classic horror villains. With his disfigured face, dark hat, and trench coat, he looks just like Vincent Price's character in House of Wax. When he wears bandages, he looks like the Invisible Man, and he also has aspects of Phantom of the Opera. And when he's in his lair, surrounded by lab equipment, he could be any mad scientist of the 30s. So basically, it's like if you combined a classic monster with a superhero, but in the style of Evil Dead 2. It's the transition between Raimi going from horror to Spider-Man. This is the missing link. Add in some bizarre humor, amazing the- practical effects, and Liam Neeson screaming at a carnival employee over a pink elephant. Now, the pink elephant, if you please. No way. Okay, this is one weird movie, but it's awesome. The movie came out in 1990, but the game came out in 91, which was 30 years ago. Wow, do I feel old? Well, check this out. My Simon's Quest review is now as old as the actual game was when I originally reviewed it. So, 17 years on one side and 17 years on the other. Look, some dorks online even did the math. There's other dates listed too, because Simon's Quest had a Japanese and US release, and the original nerd episodes were on VHS tape, not YouTube. But all this is way too nerdy, even for me. <laughs> Regardless, I'm old as shit, and so is this shitty game. So how does Darkman stack up on the NES? Well, let's pop this fucker in and find out. Well, the first thing I want to say about this game is actually a positive. It's got a kicking soundtrack. It thumps that bass so hard. It sounds awesome. Also, Darkman looks great on the main screen, and the selection pointer is his burned and bandaged hand. Nice touch. And it's one of the few movie-based games on the NES to do a good job following the story. So far, this game's not too bad, and now we're fucked. Wow, already. Wow. Fuck? Um, fuck? Fuck. Fuck! Um. Fuck! Oh, oh. fuck! <clears throat> Fuck! <laughs> oh, you gotta be fucking kidding me! What am I doing wrong? The controls feel like hell inside an ass! Seriously, I don't feel like any death I get is justified. If I were playing like shit, that'd be fine. But when the game just refuses to do what the controller tells it to, that's goddamn dingo dingleberries. That's shit caked in the ass fur of an Australian predator dog! It's beyond frustrating because you never know how to approach a new situation. The game changes the rules on the fly and gives you barely a second to react. So you almost always end up killing yourself in some stupid fucking way. I mean, should I run and jump or should I jump from a standstill? And how do I keep falling through the platforms? Punching and kicking enemies is a crapshoot. I try to run up behind them and beat them down, but my punches don't always land. It looks like I'm constantly giving the enemies a thumbs up. Hey, good job, dude! Sometimes I win, sometimes I don't, with no clear rhyme or reason. So I watched the demo, and it's like the demo from The Wizard of Oz on Super Nintendo, where not even the game can beat one of its own levels. Pathetic. There does seem to be a lot of variety in the gameplay, at least. It has platforming, weird swinging levels, elevator mazes, and you get to play as different characters with different abilities. But sadly, a variety of shit is still just a bunch of different turds hanging out together. Kind of like taking a dump the morning after you just binged at a truck stop buffet. Yeah, there was variety, but you spent most of the day on a toilet and it left your ass itchy and raw. <laughs> you know, I'm getting shitty game flashbacks. I feel like I've played this game before, but I haven't. Oh, I know, RoboCop 2 on the NES. It reminds me of that. Wonder what it could be. Maybe it's the similar sprite designs, or the almost identical level design between the games. Or maybe it's the sickening color palette that looks like a festering mass of boogers and barf. 
Or maybe the real reason is because the same five fuckers developed both games. Yeah, no mm. joke. The same five people made Robocop 2 and Darkman on NES. I don't know if I should find that impressive or just... Uh -uh. Nerd. I'm learning to live with a lot of things. Like shitty games. What the hell is this shit? What the- what is happening right now? I don't know. I heard you were playing Darkman for the NES, developed by the same people as Robocop 2. So I am the Robo Darkman nerd. Get it? No, this is just a regular yeah. review. There's no skits or anything. So get back in that fucking corner and fuck the fuck off! You fuck. <laughs> Jesus, dude. Well, that was unnecessary, yet oddly relevant, because Darkman basically ripped off Robocop for most of the movie. I said it was based on Batman, but I'm wrong. Darkman is more like Robocop than anything else. No wonder the same game designers worked wow. both shitty games. When you get a game over, Darkman cries like a baby, and then types out the high scores with his one weird finger. Darkman really needs to get a copy of Mavis Beacon Teaches Typing. The levels are pretty short, but the finicky controls and terrible physics help pad them out with cheap deaths. You can balance on tight ropes, which is actually kind of a neat mechanic. You have to tap A and B to keep your balance, but watch out for the big red bubbles because they'll kill you in one hit. Yeah, just like in the movie, Darkman's one weakness was red sewer bubbles. Nah, that wasn't a thing. You oh, reach the God. end, do a cool cape swoop, and then it's on to the next one. Level 2 is this maze of elevators. The first time you play this, I guarantee you will die. Wow, this is exactly what I wanted to play. Isn't this fucking fun? I mean, who fucking wants this? This is a beginner's trap. The only way to get through it is to do it over and over again till you learn exactly which direction you need to push. If you did this on your first try, it's blind luck. I mean, this shouldn't be part of the game. They might as well just throw in a shitty slide puzzle. Basically, the elevator moves and you have to guide it down the right path. And yeah, I know there's big arrows telling you where to go, but it happens too fast. Sadly, this is just a warm-up, because the real elevators come later in the game and get way, way faster. Between levels, you have these Hogan's Alley-style shooter stages, where you need to take a picture of a certain henchman to make a mask of them. The first mask you have to get is Polly. All these people are shooting at you, which can be pretty intimidating, but all you have to do is not point your camera at them, and they can't hit you. Just like in real life. I don't know if you knew this, but if you ever happen to be in a situation where an entire town of people are trying to shoot at you, just whip out a camera and point it away from them, and they'll all miss you. And this time I'm kidding! So after you take the photos, you play the next level as Polly, who looks like Uncle Fester in a pink sweater swinging around a fucking caveman club. And this is one of the parts in the game that's just shits for the birds. First off, you're fighting your way through Central Park. Never mind the fact that it's riddled with bottomless pits, soldiers, buzz saws, and murderous pink fish that kill you in one hit. My real question is, why the fuck are we in Central Park? Darkman takes place in Los Angeles and was filmed on location there, plus Canada. Did Darkman get on a fucking plane and fly across the country just for this? This is like the background in violence fight. Why are there so many video games that confuse New York for LA? Whatever. This level's more of the same platforming. Paulie's slow and his club fucking sucks. I get my ass kicked by these Central Park soldiers all the time. The next part is an infuriating climb to the top of the level. I'm constantly whiffing jumps or just getting my shit kicked in. Eventually, you square off with Polly. He just walks toward you while you beat the oh. ever-loving shit out of him with a club. That's it. It's possibly one of the most pitiful boss fights I've ever seen in a game. Also in the movie, Darkman didn't bludgeon Polly to death in Central Park. Polly was thrown out the window of his apartment. The game takes certain liberties once in a while, like putting the climactic helicopter chase scene in the middle of the game. It's the best action scene in the movie. Dark man's hanging from the helicopter, the grenade launcher's shooting at him, everything's exploding. But in the game, however, Dark man swings through traffic, avoiding trucks and buses. Also, there must be a motorcycle rally going on because you pass a bunch of bikers. You can collect coins and stuff, but I find it easier to just stay up at the top. Nothing really hits you there except for these stupid fucking pigeons. 
I'm pretty sure that if a bird hit Darkman while swinging through the streets at high speeds from a helicopter, it'd get obliterated. But it flies through you like nothing. I should also mention, after the first photo shoot level, you never play as regular Darkman again. Instead, you just play as different henchmen now. First you're Pauly, now you're Skip. He's the one with the prosthetic leg machine gun. Yeah, seriously, if you haven't seen the movie, watch it. Skip hops Ooh, around so constantly and has his leg gun. Wow, it's great to have this leg gun, because now you have a long-range attack. Oh, but every time you fire it, you get sent back, and usually over a fucking cliff. His levels all take place at a carnival filled with evil clowns throwing bowling balls and pies. Also, whatever you do, don't touch the fucking clowns. Let me ask you something. Have you ever touched a clown in real life? I mean, I mean seriously, have you no. ever touched a clown in real life? No. Of course you haven't, because you'd be dead. <laughs> Once at a birthday party, a friend of mine, he ran up to the clown after the magic act, went to hug him. And he died. He died. Right on the spot. <laughs> Shut up, dude. <laughs> yeah, I did it. Another thing in this level that makes me want to give myself a Tabasco enema are these platforms that reverse your controls. The first time I landed on it, I hopped right off the cliff and died without knowing what the hell happened. Also, this is the level where I realized you have limited continues, because the game booted my ass back to the start and wouldn't let me select continue anymore. So I had to run through the warehouse wow. again, take the pictures, bludgeon Polly in Central Park, and swing from the helicopter all over again, just to die in the same exact motherfucking way on my last life again. Yeah, each time I restart, I die on the very next obstacle. So it's always one step forward and like 10 steps back into a pile of dog shit. Thankfully, if you enter Dermy into the hidden password screen, it lets you select your level. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be Dermis, you know, like skin, but here it's Dermy. Yeah, I don't know. Eventually, I got used to each level and got through the funhouse and killed Skip. Which is kind of weird because Skip is the only bad guy to have his death scene cut from the final movie. If it was anything like in the game, I can see why it was cut. It's on to the next henchman, Smiley. Smiley is probably the best because he actually has a decent jump. You run around fighting ninjas, and then you kick the shit out of the real Smiley, and then you're on to another helicopter level. So now we're finally at the end, and this is where Darkman wears the face of Durant, who's the main villain. Oh wait, Durant isn't the main bad guy? It's huh? this corporate asshole named Strack? It's like Robocop, where the main henchman is more well-known than the actual final bad guy. In fact, Durant dies in a helicopter crash in the movie, but somehow returns for the sequel, Darkman 2, The Return of Durant. That would be like Robocop 2, The Return of Clarence Boddicker. Doesn't make any sense! Construction oh, workers no. throw hammers, but luckily, you have a gun that shoots. Well, yeah, it shoots these. Oh, and there's also two elevator mazes. Two. And they're definitely the worst ones so far. They have branching wow. paths that move so fast that I can't even begin to get a rhythm down. I replayed each one about ten times before I was able to figure out the right way. It made me want to finger fuck a garbage disposal. By the time I hit the final level, I shared Liam Neeson's deep-seated hatred for Durant and needed to end his <laughs> life to move on with mine. Durant then served me my ass on a platter again wow. and a fucking again. Getting to Durant sucks as it is, but when you fight him, one wrong move and Durant gently nudges you to your death. <sighs> Fuck you, Durant! You're gonna die! You took my face! You took my life! Yeah! Yes. Fuck yeah! Durant's dead. The movie ends with a cameo of Bruce Campbell. Mm -hmm. Totally unexpected, kind of an in-joke, but man, it leaves off on a great note. They could have had that in the game, just an 8-bit face of Bruce smirking at you, but no, instead you get a shitty text screen. Well played. Well played? If you say so, I died only a million times. If you say falling through platforms, dying on elevator mazes, dropping to my doom like I have lead weights up my ass, and having button mashing thumbs up battles was all smooth and well played, then yeah, um, sure. He must forever walk in the shadow of the dark man. 
as if his shadow is any darker because he's dark man. Or maybe it's a reference to the shadow, the detective character from the 30s, which Sam Raimi supposedly wanted to make a film of, but couldn't get the rights. So maybe it would be more accurate to say dark man walks in the shadow of the shadow. Or it literally means to walk in his own shadow. You ever tried to walk in your own shadow? It's not easy. The fucker keeps moving all the time. And to do it forever, you know, chasing the sun around the earth, avoiding clouds, and never sleeping or eating? I'd rather try that than play any more of this fucking piece of shit. Fuck this game. Watch it go. Give me the pink, the elephant. pink elephant, please. I'm sorry, buddy. It don't count unless you're behind the line. But I was behind the line. Not hardly. I was sitting right here on the couch. Now, the pink elephant, the pink elephant. if you please. No way. <laughs> I want the pink elephant for the fans watching. Why don't you just, uh... Get lost, pal. Uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> Elephant! <laughs> Quickly! Didn't you hear me, weirdo? Scram. Take the elephant! Take the fucking elephant! Take the fucking elephant! Jesus Christ! <laughs> Chill out, dude. Forgive me! Oh, here we go. Crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much the only infamous scene that I remember from, uh... Well, that I know, that I've heard of from, uh, Darkman. That <laughs> he freaks out over a pink elephant. <laughs> Yeah, that would be cool, man, to have freaking, like, like, man, like, Sam Raimi recently got him to show up in, um, Doctor Strange's Multiverse of Madness. Why couldn't he, and, uh, in the Darkman movie, why not have him show up in the Darkman video game? <laughs> like, uh, like, just have him show up and say, like, groovy or something like that, and just, like, yeah, like, some, you know, but nope. <laughs> Uh, anyway, that's my reaction to Angry Video Game Nerds Dark Man on the NES. Uh, everyone take care of yourselves and each other, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!